There will be a lot of collaboration today. The Made Fire is the name of the operation. Made Fire. Made Fire. M-A-D-E. Made Fire Motion Books and Comics. That is correct. It's called Made Fire. And one, uh, the comics that you can download, uh, they should be free. One is called Manu, and the other is called Treatment. And they should is be mo uh, Made Fire Motion Books and Comics? That is correct. Oh, okay. That is the correct one. <laughs> And I'll give you guys a minute to do that before we get started. Copyright. <laughs> 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 but as I'm cautious, the guardian tells more and more that I would trust her. So I think this should be a one yeah. Like somewhere outside. Yeah. Some quick how to's on how to do everything that you just did uh, and um, show you some actions and example of uh, some of the things that Roger talked about today all at once. So if you guys, uh, whoever's turned around, if we can turn back this way, we can start it on this next part. Is, is, anybody, is there anybody who has difficulty with this concept that space is time and that we can manipulate it with things like panel size, panel placement, Details in the panel and kind of details as well. Um, actually, that's one of my favorite. My, one of my favorite ways to slow down a reader is detail. Um, length of a panel. Um, the simplicity, of, for example, um, the simplicity of characters having only one or two characters in a very long panel, but lots of detail in terms of the environment, little objects that are laying around, um, background. These, uh, this is one of my favorite ways to slow down a reader. Um, it's, I know it can be a little confusing. Long, bigger panels can be longer moments, but they can also be moments that are just as short as small panels uh, in terms of time, but are more significant. So it's either a longer amount of time or more importance in a shorter amount of time. Probably one of the simplest way to uh, to do this is like so if you do the the quick panel let's say we do uh, I try not to do uh, if you're doing on a regular comic size piece of paper four panels across is getting a little cluttered you want to try and keep it to three so let's say that this is three and then one long one so it'll have three faces. And they're all sort of looking up and sort of turning around. And they're all saying, gasp. Eh, eh, eh. All right, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, and then in this panel, we do a kaboom. Good old kaboom. Now, this is an example of which the moments in time are relatively equal. The gasp, 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 this can happen sequentially uh, or can happen simultaneously. This way we've done it simultaneously, so it's even shorter. This moment would be, the kaboom would be just as quick as a gasp, but we've expanded it to give it a sense of significance. Are you cool with this? How did it go mixing these genres, these characters, these locations together? How yeah, do you guys have do you guys have fun? Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> it's it's it can actually be it's almost easier to do it on paper um, and when you're doing it with words. But as we said, comics is a visual medium. So you when you're messing around with genres, uh, when you're collaborating with somebody and they're bringing in ideas that you didn't expect, they're coming in from different cultural contexts, different genres. One of the decisions you have to make is which parts get represented visually, and which parts are going to be in the text, which parts are going to be in the, uh, the textual portion of the narrative. Um, this is one of the, okay, quick question. If we were going to make this decision, what would be, the first, what would be our guiding principle? Hey, look at you. Uh, oh, top marks. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you would go back to your purpose first and foremost. Um, but as I said, it is collaborative, so uh, it's not just the writer and the artist or the two writers um, that are collaborating. It's the text 
and the visuals that collaborate. So you make your decisions about how to do this, and it's actually, you can do it in some very simple ways. Like, for example, if your story uh, is, uh, uh, if the sequence of events feels more like a Western, you can keep it that way. You can keep the, you can make the dialogue, the narration, more Western sounding, uh, you know, where nobody probably speaks correctly and all their dialogue and all is, you know, heavily accented and local, that sort of thing. Um, and you can use the other side of your genre to represent the visuals and give it a nice mix, give it a nice collaboration. Um, so really quick example of just a quick way how to do this. Um, I've got this sort of moment here between these two very in love stick figures. Um, uh, and they're just sort of gazing into each other's eyes. Phone's ringing, and then this, we have this person here. You, you're more important. And so we've got. Um, I've uh, once again I've expanded a panel based on its significance, the amount of time that it takes. Um, but I've also shown that these two moments in time are overlapping. They're not entirely distinct from each other. Um, so we've actually. It, it would be equivalent to. Um, in a film, the camera moving while somebody's talking. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's essentially a kind of pan, really. Um, so, this is a romance. Um, and if your story is a romance story, that's fine. If it's a romance western, no kidding, I know it's kind of cheap, but for the purposes of what we're doing, it's simply just putting hats on these people if you really want to do it that way. So, I give him a cowboy hat, and I'll give this person kind of a longer hat with a little thing hanging from it. Uh, I have not differentiated gender, and frankly, I'm going to keep it that way. Um, so, okay, so it was a romance. We put hats on them. It is now uh, a, West, a Western romance. Um, and... Uh, if you want to make it a sci-fi romance, you can have one arm and a weird looking gun. A little antenna dish coming off the phone. <laughs> maybe, maybe some text on the screen. So instead of a dial, it just says incoming call. There we go. So we have some hardcore Western sci-fi romance <laughs> in which this man would rather shoot a phone than let it interrupt the moment he's having with his companion. Um, how are we on this? Do we feel like we could sort of replicate this for our own needs? This is a very simple way of doing it, but it's a way to make your, you know, your art and your text collaborate, get your point across, get your style across. Uh, let's see. Um, there was uh, there's one thing that um, I was hoping uh, uh, Roger would cover that he didn't, which is the importance between sequence of events and cause and effect. Um, so when you're doing comics art, when you're showing, representing something visually, um, it is sequential, absolutely, but you don't want to stick with sequence of events. You want to stick with action, so what's the action of the moment, um, and you want to stick with cause and effect. Um, if you do something in terms of sequence of events, if you have a scene where uh, you know a phone's ringing and a character hears the phone's ringing, walks over to the phone, picks up the phone, and says hello, you've not made a comic book, you have made an illustrated instruction guide on how to answer a phone. Um, that whole thing can be done in one panel, which is basically phone ringing, person turning to the phone from having looked in another direction. That's it. That's all you really need. Um, so cause and effect is really what you want to stick with. Uh, consecutive action you want to avoid. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Characters. We're into the really art stuff now. Um, it actually does not matter how much you cannot draw, honestly. Um, uh, if you want to make a character that really stands out and is recognizable, we were talking about this the other day. Um, you were mentioning that sometimes when your your characters they can sort of they change and sort of shift from panel to panel, page to page, and 
Um, uh, the big trick to avoid that, and really like, and you can be your harshest critic too, um, so keep that in mind. But the big trick to avoid that is silhouette. Um, if you're coming up with a character, giving them a recognizable, a definable silhouette is the best way to make them recognizable, pa panel to panel, page to page, without actually having to be a good artist. You can be a crap artist, and your audience will know which character is talking if they have a definable silhouette. Um, Batman, Superman, the most definable silhouettes in comic books. Um, you can recognize them without seeing any detail, without seeing any color. Aha! Text. The actual writing of the text. Uh, your comic book text is going to come in three basic varieties. There's the word balloon, uh, the thought balloon, uh, which is actually kind of fallen out of favor, which I think is lame. I really like the thought balloon. Um, and uh, the thought balloon has actually mostly been replaced by the caption box. And a caption box is um, it's a nice kind of a catch-all. Uh, it can be used for narration. Uh, it can be used for off-screen, like off-panel dialogue, off-panel voiceover. Uh, you can use it to um, just convey editorial notes and information to your reader. Um, so ba the basics are notes, n uh, notes, narration to the reader, and off-panel dialogue are what caption is good for. Um, caption boxes, just a little FYI, caption boxes sort of replace thought balloons because they're sort of simpler, they take up less uh, space on the panel, but really it makes I think, it, personally, I think it was part of comic book's movement to try and seem like more of a legitimate, um, more of a legitimate, you know, literary medium, this idea that there is a narrator with a position and a voice as opposed to just zooming into somebody's head. Um, uh, when you're doing dialogue balloons, um, this is the thing, seriously, in my seven years of making comics, I never learned this until somebody straight up told it to me. This business. Um, if you're doing, uh, when you're doing dialogue balloons, try and keep it to about 24 words per balloon. Um, uh, and you know, and, and you can write more for that for a scene, but it will, or for a panel, but you'll want to break it up every 24 words. That's when you want to split it off into a different balloon. Um, so you were talking about this earlier, how you can have a, a ton of dialogue, um, or just a lot of words. Um, if you if you just if you're coming up with too many words, more and the balloons are filling up a page. Um, this is actually that's not a small question. It really isn't. It's it's not a dumb question. When that starts to happen, you have to start really looking at things like asking yourself questions like, is there anything in this dialogue that or in these words that can be represented visually? Is this what information in this giant block of text that I've written um, doesn't have to come here. You know, if I'm taking the audience on a journey, is there a place where part of this information would be better somewhere else? Later on, earlier, that sort of thing. Is this panel big enough? If I'm going to have, if I really need all this talking, you know, is there a panel somewhere that came before it that's too big? You know, can I expand this? Is there something that should just flat out be left unsaid for the sake of subtext, for the sake of irony? Um, these, are, these are questions to ask yourself, because you will find yourself coming up with way more words than you need, um, especially if you're like me and you've been talking for an hour. Um, but 24, word, uh, 24 words per balloon is probably the best way to go. And um, I, I've worked out so far, this is what I can tell, the reason for that is three word, four word, five, Five, four, and three. So you can make yourself a nice little circle. Um, I, I just tore my hair out when somebody told me that. Um, and uh, the, the last thing is, uh, this is the last thing I'm going to tell you before you guys are off to make your own comic for an hour. And then we'll be talking about interactive comics uh, after lunch, right? After lunch. Um, which is, uh, you, you don't have to draw these things. If you really don't want to draw these things, um, you don't have to. You can do them photographically, if anybody's interested in doing photographic comics, and making them not look like junk. 
uh, we can talk. We, uh, we can take some time. Um, you know, we'll have our own private little workshop, and we'll talk about how to do this. You can do it on your phone. There are applications to do it. Um, you can do it in Photoshop or uh, GIMP. Who here has Photoshop on their laptop, by the way? We've got one, two, three, four. Wow, excellent. I teach you guys how to do some fairly nice looking comics in Photoshop that you can shoot with your phone. It's actually really fun, but I will tell you if you want to do it here, it takes a little bit of organization unless you're going to do something without people because it's actually quite similar to shooting a movie. Um, making a comic with photographs and doing a good job. Self -shade or What's that? Do you use like self -shade no, no, or? no. I, I personally, I have what I uh, I called it a, a, a signature combination of effects and layers. But that was, I mean, it was just a, a, a macro that I did that I thought I felt looked consistently good every time, and that was appropriate for the kind of story that I was telling. That sort of thing. But yeah, if you guys are interested in that, I can show you how to do that and how to make it easy and. And it's actually it's actually a lot of fun to do with friends. You do costumes and you know you play out scenes, do blocking, and you'll have your special effects department and all that stuff. Um, so if you guys want to do that, we can talk about that. So it's kind of an ambitious thing to do if you're going to do it well. Um, does anybody have any questions? Yes. We're not doing that. How are we doing? That? Um, really, you can do it on a sheet of paper. Oh. It, it, you can do it any way you want as long as it looks, you know, relatively like what you'd want to do. It doesn't have to be a completed product. If you want to shoot for that, bang on. Um, but this is just about getting your idea on a page, very low tech, pencil and paper, um, if that's okay, I hope. Um, and, uh, and yeah, that, that, and that's pretty much it. And, and uh, if you would like to show it to the group um, before we go to lunch, like if you've got something completed and you want to share, please, please share. Um, and I would be happy to give you feedback um, of any kind if you're interested in that, or if you just want to hold it up and then walk away. Can you just write it as a script? You can just you, you can just write it as a script, absolutely. Um, but really, like I, I mean, because all, everything we're doing here is experimental. It's provisional. It really, if you don't want to draw, that's fine. But stick figures are fine. I, one of the most you know well-paid comic book artist in the business right now does nothing but stick figures and it's just fine. We'll be looking at those too later. Who here is a fan of XKCD? Yeah, I knew you were already. Um, just by looking at you. You can tell an XKCD fan just by looking at them. Um, uh, any other questions before we... So what is XKCD? Oh, okay. Well, X, X, uh, XKCD is, um, is a uh, comic of, made by a gentleman who cannot draw, who is in fact very funny. Uh, he's a programmer, yeah? I believe he's either a programmer or, or a statistician. He also worked for NASA. He also worked for NASA. He's basically just a very smart man who writes comics about relationship, love, math, computers, okay. that sort of thing. They're excellent. Um, and, but we will look at them later. I've well, got they have them stick afraid. figures, which is great if you can't draw. Yeah, they're just stick figures. So that's all you have to do. I mean, it's just a matter of, I would encourage you to draw them simply because simply to get you thinking about the collaboration that happens between the art and the text and telling a story and, and exercising your ability to make decisions about what, what's visual and what's not, that sort of thing. Um, so if there's no other questions, I will release you guys into the wild. You can do these here if you want to ask questions, if you want to go somewhere else and work on them in private, that's fine too. This is your time. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, they're really beautiful. I can understand why you want to capture them in close-up.